What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Brazil? For the nature lover, the Amazon rainforest probably. Maybe Christ the Redeemer for the most spiritual. For any sports enthusiast, it's football. A country that can qualify as the synonym for the sport. But today when I say Brazil, you will talk about the unprecedented floods and destruction. The recent floods in Rio Grande do Sul and part of southern Brazil have not only wreaked havoc on local communities, but has also cast a shadow when it comes to the country's footballing infrastructure. How the grassroots of the sport has crumbled under nature's fury. Brazil's footballing landscape has faced its fair share of challenges in the recent years. The fury of the floods has now exposed the fragility of the country's domestic football infrastructure. Top tier matches have been postponed, stadiums have been damaged. I'll explain. Internacional and Grimio, along with Juventude, the three clubs that play in Brazil's Serie A, saw their stadiums crumbling due to flooding. Matches have been put off till the end of the month. There were three league matches that should have happened that stands postponed. Even the third round Copa do Brasil game between Internacional and Juventude has also been cancelled. And to make matters worse, Internacional's training facility has been flooded with water, resulting in no training for a while to come. The sport has come to a standstill. The domestic structure has been raised, which makes me ask, is a country's weak domestic structure that has been humbled by the floods responsible for the trophy drought that Brazil finds itself in? That the system was always weak. Football geniuses found a way to survive and fight. They had the passion. The street gave birth to superstars. But are those streets so wobbly? The system in place itself flawed that has been exposed now by the hand of God, the rains. Up until mid-2000s, Brazil was a giant force in football. The country has produced talents like Pele, Garincha, Ronaldo, Zico, Falco, Romario, Ronaldinho, Kaká. The list doesn't end. From every decade, you can pick world-class players who've defined and redefined the sport. But has the country lost its way post-2007, the year they, they last won a Ballon d'Or? We spoke of the latest mismanagement row plaguing the association when the country failed to qualify for the Paris Olympics earlier this year. And with FIFA admonishing them and constantly supervising their functions, we thought, OK, there is some hope. Because the governing body thinks so, the fans pray so, so there's hope indeed for Brazilian football. But the country is currently struggling to even find a spot at the World Cup. The World Cup that Brazil at one time stamped its class over. Now, if they fail to do so, it would mean the end of an era, a huge churn in the fabric of the sport. Imagine having no Brazil at the World Cup. A football World Cup without the Samba magic, magic is no World Cup at all. They are five-time world champions after all, the most by any country in the history of the sport. But here's the thing, their last World Cup triumph came way back in 2002. Apart from Confederations Cup in 2013, the Copa America in 2019, the cabinet is bare indicating a very, very harsh reality. So have they stopped producing brilliance? Actually, no. There are a few superstars and some bright sparks. World-class talents like Neymar, Vinicius Jr. and Gabriel Jesus, to name a few. So why no silverware? The sense we get is that Brazil has been unable to translate individual brilliance into collective success on the international stage over the last few years now. The failure to win major tournaments in the recent years has left Brazil more perplexed, we spoke about their domestic system or the lack of it being responsible for the downfall of Brazilian football. And it seems from various factors, one is the loss of street football, which has been long the breeding ground for talent in this country. Street football was once their heartbeat, where young talents honed their skills and creativity in unforgiving and daunting playgrounds. No greens, but the rough streets. That's how you saw the rise of Pele, Zico and Romario. We've heard all about it. The country focused on natural talent rather than a system, a mechanical system. If I drew a comparison in India, it's like street cricket, the gully cricket like we call it. The street where people play and dreams come true or dreams are born. To small patchy grounds called Maidans in the city of Mumbai, which produced raw talent for the world, like Yashasvi Jaiswal. But getting back to Brazil, there's now a growing concern that the system of producing footballing prodigies is drying up. Our technique has suffered, the playing style changed and that ended up taking away some of our creativity. Our football used to be so joyful, now it's become more mechanical. Jogo Bonito, that was the name given to Brazil's playing style that translates to joyful. That was how people played the sport, their style of play. But recently, it seems to be diminishing. 
Another factor behind Brazil's worries is the lack of investment in grassroots football. While countries like Germany and Spain have revolutionized their system, they focused on technical proficiency, tactical understanding. Now, from a young age, in contrast though, Brazil finds itself far behind the rest. The country's reliance on natural talent alone is no longer sufficient in this very competitive, changing football landscape. The champions are always a reference and Spain is outlining how soccer should be played around the world. They dictate the rules today, like Brazil once did, as well as Argentina in certain periods. I think the worst mistake we could make is to believe we are favourites before playing. This is the closest you will get to not winning. Now this is more than a decade ago, and yet how prophetic. Mano Menezes is telling us more than a decade ago in 2012 that Brazil was sitting on a ticking time bomb. There was a time when international stars like Pele didn't leave his boyhood club Santos. The legend spent almost his entire career there, attached to the roots. But now you see Neymar, Jesus, Rick Charlison, Vinicius all playing in Europe or the Saudi, via the Spanish League, Premier League or the Saudi League. So Brazil's star players are flourishing individually, yes, but the sum total is nearly nothing. So all these factors have contributed to heating the domestic structure and that setup, which of course has led to a lack of revenue, with dwindling attendance figures and declining TV viewership. The Brazilian football market is facing unprecedented challenges. Gone are the days when the clubs boasted of packed stadiums and lucrative broadcasting deals. The lack of star power and marquee matchups has led to that decline in interest from sponsors too, further leading to financial woes. But despite the struggles, the passion for the game runs deep. I'll close with this incident. About five months ago, one of the most successful clubs, Santos, Pele Santos, got relegated to second tier. Fans let out their rage and frustration, causing a riot in the city of Santos. Of course, writing is never the answer, but the reason why we speak about this is that fans were driven by the emotion associated with football. They still do. A din of that riot ironically telling us how silent the samba has fallen. First Post puts the spotlight on Africa. We report from across the continent. Rewriting the narrative. Stories of hope and progress. Amid coups conflicts, and climate crisis. The challenges are many, but so are the opportunities. Trying to do what benefits the majority of uh, citizens. Tracking the world's second largest continent. Launching soon. First Post Africa.